On this problem, the rigid element ABCD, the L-shaped element, is supported by a pin at C, and there are two rods at A and D that are supporting it as well. This system is subjected to a force of P, and we want to determine how much our stress is in rod number one and rod number two. So in order to solve this problem, we always start with the free body diagram. And this is the technique that we have already learned in statics, but as I said, we are going to use that a lot in mechanics of materials. So let's make the free body diagram for this L-shaped element. I'm going to take it out by removing the pen support and cutting rod 1 and 2. When I do that, I need to put unknown forces at the cut sections. So first, let me put force P, which is the external force acting on this part. And there will be two unknown forces at C, because this is a pencil port, and there will be two reaction forces. One of them is in the horizontal direction, which is called Cx, and the other one is a vertical direction, which is called Cy. In addition, there will be two forces on the cut sections in element 1 and 2, and those forces are going to be outward from the surface. We are going to call them F1 and F2. So this is going to be the free body diagram for this element. Now, we need to see how many unknowns we have and how many equations we have, and if we were able to solve the problem just by using the equilibrium equations. So in this case, P is given. F1, F2, Cx, and Cy are unknown. So in total, there are four unknowns in this problem. And in general, for two-dimensional problems, we have three equations. Some of the forces in the x direction, some of the forces in the y direction, and some of the moments. So in this case, we need to get a one extra equation in order to be able to solve this problem. Four equations, four unknowns, and we can solve it. So this problem is going to be one degree in the terminate, which means that we need to get a one extra equation from the compatibility of deformation, as we discussed before. Okay, but I'm gonna make this problem more simpler by eliminating reaction forces at C. So instead of using the three equilibrium equations, I'm just going to use some of the moments about point C. And that eliminates Cx and Cy because those forces are passing through that point, and that would leave us with F1 and F2 and one equation. So the problem remains one degree indeterminate, but in this case, I would be able to solve the forces by a smaller system of equations, two equations and two unknowns, which is simpler to solve. Okay, let's write down some of the moments about C. Um, force F1 multiplied by its distance is going to be F1 multiplied by A plus B. And in this case, I'm going to assume that the counterclockwise is positive. So F1 multiplied by A plus B gets positive sign. The next one is going to be the force coming from F2. This is going to be negative because that is clockwise opposite to the previous moment. And the moment comes from that is F2 multiplied by its distance to point C, which is given as a C or 300 millimeter in this case. That is the second term. The third term is going to be the moment coming from external force P, and that is going to be again clockwise, so that gets a negative sign. And its distance to support C is given to be A, which is 400 millimeter. And that's it. Some of the moments should be equal to zero. I'm going to plug in the values of A, B, and C and simplify that, which gives us a relationship between F1 and F2. As we can see, we have two unknowns, one equation, the problem is indeterminate. So there are four steps for solving indeterminate problems in general. We have done the first step. The second step is writing down the deformations in terms of force. F1 multiplied by L divided by EA is going to give us the deformation, Lie equation. So delta 1 is FL over EA, and I'm going to use the associated values with element number 1. F1 is unknown. That would simplify to F1 divided by 23,333. This gives us a relationship between deformations and force in that element. We will repeat for element number two by plugging the associated values. And again, we find another relationship between F2 and delta two. Now we get to the critical part. How can I find a relationship between movements of rod number one and rod number two? In order to establish such a relationship, we need to figure out how the element is moving and deforming. 
that L-shaped element is rigid, which means that it is not bending. It can just tilt around that support at C. So based on that, I can imagine that this is how this element would deform if it is subjected to an external force of P. In that case, joint A is moving downward, which causes stretch in element number one, and joint D is moving to the left side, which compresses element number two. So we can identify two triangles and establish a relationship between delta one and delta two using these two triangles. These two triangles are similar to each other because the angle remains the same. And I would say movement of joint A downward, which is delta one, divided by the length of that green triangle, which is A plus B, is equal to movement of joint D which is called delta 2, divided by the length of that blue triangle, which is given to be C. However, we need to be careful about one thing here. What's that? Sine. That's right. So element number one is stretched. Element number two is being compressed. One of them is positive, the other one is negative. So don't forget to add a negative sign here if you want to carry the sign over into the equations. Okay. Now I'm going to plug in the values of delta 1 and delta 2 as we calculated in the previous step into this equation. And that would give us another relationship between F1 and F2, which I'm going to call that equation number 2. Now we have two equations and two unknowns that we can solve it for force. And in step number 4, I'm going to put them together and solve it for F1 and F2. Now let's validate the values that we get here. F2 is given to be negative 78.8. Negative means that this element is being compressed, which makes sense. We can see that if force P is pushing the beam downward, element 2 is being compressed. So that is negative sign. And element 1 should be positive, which we get the positive value here. The rest of this problem is super easy because we just want to determine stresses by dividing forces over area. Area for each of these parts are given, and I would simply divide the force that we calculated over the area after unit conversion, of course, in order to determine stresses in each of these two parts. Okay, this problem didn't ask us to determine how much are the movements or deformations in the rod, but to complete this problem, let's calculate those parts as well. So in order to calculate the deformations, I just need to plug in the values of forces into the equations that we calculated already in step number two. And that would give us the magnitude of deformations in each of these two rods. Okay, solving this problem seems to be long. There are several calculations involved, but all of these problems are having four steps use equilibrium, find the relationship between force and deformations, then use the compatibility of deformation and solve it for force. The tricky part is usually how to relate deformations together. By practicing more problems, we would be able to identify how can we find a relationship between the deformations.